Hey guys. Oof. Oof, my hair's a mess. Oof. Sorry. <laughs> so I am here today to do a review on tarot skills for the 21st century, mundane and magical divination by Josephine McCarthy. So I have my notes and all the stuff that I, what I kind of really liked. And there's a few things that I didn't like, which the things that I liked are a lot longer list than, than what I didn't. Um, but I think that overall, this is a great book, especially for beginners. Um, there's some advice and knowledge in here that I would have absolutely loved when I first started reading tarot. And I think that um, it can definitely come in handy and I will probably be referencing this book a lot um, because there's just, there's some great, great things in here. So let's get started. So here's the book. It's a really beautiful book. It's, um, let's see, how many pages is it? It is 298 pages. So that's great. Um, the back, let me read that for you. At this point in my life and work, I thought it was about time that I wrote a guide to tarot to cast a light on a path that can be far more profound than it initially appears. And she is 100% right on that because this book definitely goes into a lot of um, different symbology and where, well not where, but how the Rider Waite Smith deck, which I should um, point out is, is, is all about the Rider Waite Smith. Um, but she does an amazing job with going into detail on the Rider Waite Smith deck and um, how it was created and um, she goes a little bit into Pixie's artwork and how she does have a few like hidden meanings for herself but it also goes into how um, weight helps um, influence a lot of the cards as well and I found that really interesting so it's very soft book too and so yeah let's get into it okay so first off i absolutely really loved how much she goes into um the symbology that's in especially um the major arcana which she calls trump which you know i mean not she but like a lot of people call the, the trump cards um and i really liked that she talked about pamela colin smith and there was a lot of references to the golden dawn which she kind of touched on and about how a lot of the imagery that you can find in the major arcana um, there's a lot of hidden Im imagery i should say and that draws upon a lot of mythologies which i, I did know already i mean if you you know study your right away smith deck but i didn't know that there was a lot more um religion which i mean i knew that there was some religion in the deck but she really goes into that symbology and i just i found that really interesting and 
I really liked how this is put together in the sense that um, it just goes into a lot more of just the like the basics that I have learned over the years but actually has different um, manifestos and, and like I'm going to the bibliography section about all the different um, books, short stories, uh, papers, manifestos of where she got all of this information, which I really love because there was a few times I was reading this and I was like, oh, I would really like to, you know, dig deeper into that or, you know, I want to learn more about that. And she does a great job of referencing all of that, which I think is going to be really great because I already have so many sections that I've highlighted that I want to go back and, and read deeper into, which I found really interesting. Um, anyway, so she starts off with a little bit of like going into that symbology and then what she does um, go into a bit more throughout, but I also really like the sections that she talks about with like getting to know your deck um you know which i mean that's in a lot of tarot books you can find there's nothing like you know mind-blowing but i did really like the parts when um that i would have this information or um, i guess advice that she gives I would have really loved to hear um, when I first started reading because I think this is a lot of what new tarot readers do. So um, she says like, don't be tempted to read the person who you are doing the reading for. This is a classic mistake, a classic mistake in tarot divination. Let the cards speak. And if you have to ask a question to the person you're reading for, don't ask a leading question. Be thoughtful about any question you need to ask them. Don't be tempted, and this is the part that really, don't be tempted to give the person the reading they want. If they only want good news, they should not be getting a reading. And that really hit home for me because when I first started reading and I started, you know, reading for like my friends and, and family, I never wanted to like give bad news or you know say anything negative and so I feel like you get stuck in this you know trying to like either sugarcoat or not give a, a genuine reading because you're too worried about hurting their feelings and that's something that you're projecting onto the cards at, and so when you're reading, you really do need to be, you know, um, not stone cold, but just you got to let the card say what they need to say and not try to um, make it seem either lesser than, you know. So I just, I really liked that. That was some, you know, good advice, I think, feel like there was... A few points that I I didn't really you know agree with in this section um, like there was a part where she says you know when you're reading for a person to you know shuffle the cards and don't let the person talk or um, you know really focus on the shuffling and and have them be, be quiet block them out um, so you can, you know, focus, which, I mean, to each their own, of course, but I personally love to talk to the person I'm reading to. Um, you know, it helps me, like, get their energy, understand their question, or, you know, what they're really wanting to, to um, you know, understand. Like, I, I just, I, that's one of my favorite, absolute favorite parts of reading is, like, the beginning, the shuffling um, you know, talking to them, getting, getting to know them. So, you know, teach their own, of course, but there was 
one thing in this section that I really I do, do not agree with so she has I mean it's only like two sentences but I don't know it's just it rubs me the wrong way you know so um, she says sometimes it's not a good idea for you to do a reading such as if you're getting sick or if a woman is on her period and I mean I call absolute bullshit on that uh, for a uh, you know tarot skills for the 21st century that is a little you know um, not really forward way of thinking I guess is the nicest way I can put it but um I really don't agree with that at all because if if you're on your period, it's a wonderful time. And I'm sorry for any males watching this, you know, I don't want to make you feel icky or anything, but you know, it is a part of science and you know, it's just, that is a wonderful time to, to read, especially like for yourself, because you know, you're, you're tapping into that divine feminine you know that's I feel like you're the most powerful at that time you know it's just it's a wonderful time to read I don't agree with you shouldn't read you know during your period I just I don't think so and that was the only real part in um, the books that I, I didn't like but that was mostly just you know her thoughts it wasn't really about the other stuff that's in the book because this is a great reference um, especially when it goes into the symbology um, and like the major arcana card meanings I really loved that section a lot she goes into like each of the major arcana like starting with the fool of course and she gives you know keywords and you know zero no uh foolish like which are great you know there's a mundane meaning which i found really interesting and then the esoteric meaning which is what i absolutely love I love the section where um, she has esoteric meanings because this is just, it's so good. And this is what I really can't wait to like um, go into more in depth of where she found this information. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so good. Like, I'll um, read you about the fool. The deepest mystery of the fool is that not only is it the first major card in the sequence of powers, but it's also the last, unsaid power. If a tarot deck were to have 79 cards instead of 78, the last card would also be the fool, but the fool 22. It would not have a dog yapping at his legs, nor would it have a bundle of his belongings. Instead, he would be as the hermit, alone, with only his lantern of knowledge to guide him. He would be off the cliff in full knowledge of what he is doing, the adept stepping out and crossing the great abyss, trusting the divine and his worldly belongings discarded as they're no longer needed. I just, I found that super great. Um, and she does a little bit like that for all of the major arcana. And when you go into the minor arcana, she does give a little bit of like the numerology, which is, you know, just a, which is a touch, which I, I, I did like, um, you know, I mean, I kind of already knew it, but it's great for a beginner for sure she also has um like keywords which are really good keywords for the minor arcana like i i love some of these keywords that she gives like ace of swords law enemy conflict difficult change 
heavy responsibilities, um, two of swords, peace offering, friendship that develops with, develops with a former enemy, um, productive debate. So, I mean, I just, I find that really, really great. There's a lot looking with this. Um, I also really loved the chapter about the interpretation. She does an amazing job with this chapter and I really feel like this is going to be instrumental with um, definitely upping my my skills you know with reading. I really like how she talks about that you have you know a deck of cards and sometimes it can feel limiting you know you have just this amount of cards or this amount of words you know to get your point across and with all of the questions and you know everything you go through in life how do you take such a limited vocabulary and, and turn it into a reading and I just I found that really interesting for example she does give um a great example about um like if you take just the image you know baby booties there's a lot of ways you could interpret that word or you know that image as in like if you ask the question you know am i pregnant baby booties yes you know, and then you take that same image and you ask, you know, where is the root of my sickness in my body? And then you can interpret it as like, look at your feet. Sometimes a small cut can trigger an infection. Um, am I strong enough to do this job? You think of baby booties, you know, you think of baby. So no, um, you know, because babies are frail. Um, would staying in a situation be good or would moving to a new situation be better? Baby booties, you know, um, baby, new, path, move, you know, moving, so shoes, so it's like, you know, new, no, go, get, do something new. So I just, I found that really, really cool. Um, it, it was, a, it's a great way to, to think about it, especially, you know, when you're, you're feeling stuck in a reading, you can really not just try to, oh, you know, what does that card mean? You can say, well, what do I see? Um, so I just, I found that really interesting way of, of looking at it. And she does go a little bit more into like to interpretations and vocabulary. And I just really like that part of the book. Um, another part I really liked was the layouts. She gives some great layouts with a lot of information um, about each one. And not only does she give like information and overviews, she also gives some examples, which I think is super cool. I actually really enjoy this because she's not just saying, you know, oh, look, here's a layout. She's giving you step by step of, okay, you pull these cards. This is how you read them, which, you know, I find really, really interesting. And I do think that uh, this book is a great tool, especially for new um, tarot readers. I mean, of course, you know, take everything you read and learn and always, you know, come up with your, your own way or um, also, you know, when you're learning, I always love to um, go into sources, you know, where is she getting her sources from? And she gives an, a complete full list of that here, which I am really excited about because, you know, 
there's a few times where I'm just like, I would love to go deeper into this or, you know, learn more about this. And she has a full list of everything she used when she was doing her own research for this book. So I really love that. Okay, guys, well, I really hoped um, my small review um, is helpful. Um, I didn't want to really go too in depth just because, you know, you should get the book. It, it's really good. I do really like it. Um, I do think it is more geared to newer tarot readers, but I also think that um, more experienced readers will also get a lot of value in this book, especially if you want to go deeper into um, Rider Waite Smith symbology and deeper into how the deck was created and what the inspirations were for it. So I do found that I I, I found that very interesting. So let me know if you have this book and what you thought about it. So bye guys.